In 1938, the civil war in Spain has been going for two years. As the Nazis show their support for the nationalists, the Republicans are starting to lose. In a small village in the countryside, the locals are celebrating a wedding ceremony, only to be interrupted by a convoy of cars led by a Nazi major. The family offers him a drink so strong that it burns his throat and makes him choke a little, which makes the locals laugh. Offended, the major immediately orders his officers to open fire to kill every person in the party. Then the soldiers put on gas masks and throw canisters of a strange blue-colored powder that spreads through the town. Meanwhile Captain Jan is about to be executed by a shooting squad for headbutting a judge, but he's saved just in time by his high-ranking Uncle General Lozano. Afterward in his office, Lozano explains that to get back on the army's good side Jan must deliver a letter to a place named Alarcos. Since it's located on the other side of enemy territory, it's an extremely dangerous task, that's why it was given as an alternative to the death penalty. Jan has no choice but to accept the mission, and since he can't drive, a boy named De Cruz will be his driver. He's also being punished because he fled during a battle and is now seen as a coward. On their way out, Jan sees a soldier friend that recently lost his hand, so he shares a cigarette with him before he's taken into a German train with a weird symbol led by the Nazi major. After a few hours of driving, Jan and De Cruz find the road blocked by German soldiers. The leader doesn't want to let them pass, but Jan threatens him with his gun until he lets them go. As they drive away, Jan notices that the Germans are putting fences around the area. Moments later, they hear planes flying above them and Jan uses a mirror to watch their fight. A plane ends up crashing nearby but the pilot jumps out with his parachute just in time, so Jan makes the crew stop to go help the pilot because he's on their side. The duo starts crossing the forest and after finding some plane parts with the same symbol from the Nazi train, they finally find the pilot hanging on a tree. The guy has died from the fall and both his legs are missing. Suddenly they're surrounded by a group of soldiers from the opposite side led by the sergeant, who immediately takes Jan's and Cruz's weapons. Jan pretends he has intel to make the sergeant come closer and headbutts him, but Priest Killer kicks him and threatens him with her blade. Sergeant stops her from killing him because he could be a valuable hostage and when they check his clothes, they find the letter from the mission. However inside the envelope, there's only a piece of paper that says war is won with balls. Frustrated, Sergeant tells Fuse to shoot De Cruz, and when he takes out his gun, De Cruz wets his pants. In the end Sergeant decides to keep them both as hostages and the group gets ready to leave. The photographer stays behind to take a picture of the hanging body, but suddenly the pilot wakes up as a zombie and jumps on the soldier to kill him with a vicious bite. Brodsky rushes to help his friend by tossing the zombie away and ends up with his hands covered in a weird blue powder. The zombie keeps on moving so Brodsky opens fire, but his bullets do nothing. It isn't until Sergeant shoots the zombie in the head that he finally dies. The group is confused and wonders if the pilot had been possessed, but at that moment their dead friend also wakes up and tries to attack. Brodsky grabs him by the neck and twists it before throwing him on the ground, but they're shocked to see their friend is still alive. The political commissar shoots him in the head to kill him for good. After seeing more planes fly by, the group ties Jan's and De Cruz's hands and takes them to their camp. When they arrive they're shocked to discover it's been attacked and Brodsky finds the same blue powder. Priest Killer finds the body of a fellow soldier, whose wounds start mutating until she wakes up as a zombie. Jan looks around and notices that all the dead bodies are starting to move so the group steps back, but one of the young soldiers sees his mutated father and runs to him, only to quickly be eaten by the zombies. Soon the creatures begin coming closer so the group opens fire, trying to get them on the head for the bullets to actually work. There are too many of them though, so the group runs to the shore and manages to escape on a boat. The zombies try to follow them, but they can't go too far. Afterward the sergeant finally allows for De Cruz's and Jan's ropes to be cut off, but first he punches him so they can be even. Because of the exceptional situation, they agree to work together for now even if they belong to opposite sides. Eventually they reach another shore and after hiding the boat with a bunch of branches, they start crossing the forest, only to find more zombies. These seem to be civilians and waste no time in attacking the group. Priest Killer gives Jan a weapon so he can defend himself while Brodsky has to pull De Cruz out of the way, only for the zombies to jump on him instead. Brodsky manages to knock a few zombies down, but one bites his leg and keeps him in place while more zombies surround him and bring him down. Priest Killer wants to help him, but Jan pulls her back because there's no point. After watching their friend become food, the group keeps going and in the evening they find their safe house. As soon they enter, they find three people pointing their weapons at them, Lieutenant Jurel, Private Rafir, and Sister Floor. The group also takes out their weapons and an argument ensues, but when they realize they're all running away from the zombies, they agree to work together. They spend the night in the safe house and Floor takes care of any wounds. While sharing dinner, De Cruz realizes Fuse is a famous bike racer who signed an autograph for him when he was a child, but Fuse denies it. Jural tries to hit on Priest Killer so to get him off her back, she tells him the gruesome thing she did to the priest that abused her little sister. The commissar finds a private spot and reveals he has a phone, which he uses to make a mysterious call in secret. Meanwhile Jan uses the letter to light his cigarette, and the heat makes a secret message appear on the paper. It's a map of the entire area, but he keeps it to himself for now. Afterward he also tries to hit on Priest Killer, 
but she rejects him too and notices his hands aren't worn off from labor or fighting, causing him to confess he's just a lawyer. Later in the night, they hear a wolf crying in pain and look out the window to discover a zombie approaching the house. Rafir immediately kills it with a shot, but soon a horde shows up and approaches the house too. The group gathers their things to leave, but the zombies begin reaching through the windows and grab Priest Killer, who quickly frees herself using her blade. They're starting to open the door too, so they rush to block it with a heavy box before escaping through the back door. As the zombies open the door and get inside, Fuse lights up some dynamite and throws it at them before leaving, effectively blowing up the house with all the monsters inside. After a few hours of walking through the forest, the group finds electric fences with a bunch of zombies stuck on them. One of these electrocuted zombies is Brodsky, so Jan gives him a mercy shot. Afterward Jan shows the others the map, which is written in German. It seems that the Nazis knew about the zombie hordes coming out of the valley and calculated the time and direction these hordes would take, so they put up fences to stop them. This makes the group think the Nazis are responsible for the experiment that created the zombies in the first place. Since they're inside the fenced area they have no way to escape, the team decides to look for the location marked with an X on the map to investigate what's going on. Moments later, they find the village from the beginning but they don't see anyone around, just a destroyed party covered in blue powder. While Cruz begins working on fixing a truck, Priest Killer notices lights in the church so they go inside, only to discover a rather disturbing lab. Among all the blood-covered tools, there's a container with the same symbol from the train. Suddenly they hear a noise and find a woman coming out of hiding, it's Anna, the bride from the wedding. She explains that when the Nazis opened fire, she was saved by her husband falling on top of her. Then they threw the blue powder, and Anna used the distraction to hide. Soon she heard the dead people moving again and the Nazis laughing while watching from afar. Every now and then they would capture some zombies and bring them into the church, where they put up a lab to experiment on them. All of a sudden there was an explosion and the blue powder started to spread, and then there were Nazi zombies too. The few survivors tried to escape, but they never stood a chance. While the group hears the story, the commissar finds all the paperwork related to the experiments and steals it. At that moment they hear the engine of the vehicle, but when the group tries to leave, the commissar blocks the door with his gun out. He confesses he's stolen the formula for the blue powder and wants to use it to win the war, but he also wants to leave anyone from the opposite side behind. His team refuses and when sergeant threatens him, de Cruz enters the building, so commissar takes him hostage. Using him as a shield, commissar slowly leaves the church before throwing de Cruz back into the team. However before he can shoot, a horde of zombies jumps on him to eat him. Flor immediately closes the door and reveals she knows this church, so she guides them to the back where a secret underground tunnel hides behind another door. As the group rushes through the tunnel, Anna suddenly transforms into a zombie and attacks Jural. The others push her away from him and as they struggle, Anna bites Rafir on the foot. He kicks her away and while Jural holds her down, Priest Killer shoots her in the head. Rafir's foot has a red stain so the others make him take off his shoe and sock to prove Anna's teeth didn't reach his skin. At that moment they hear the zombies coming closer, so they keep on running and reach a gate, which they shoot open to escape. Once everyone is out, Floor closes it again from the inside as she reveals she's been bitten. Sergeant says goodbye to her by giving her a few extra bullets, and Floor goes down shooting as many zombies as possible. While Cruz runs back into town to retrieve the truck, Jan proposes to go to the Nazi outpost where he saw the train with the same symbol from the containers in the church. Jan thinks they'll have an antidote, and when the others refuse to walk into enemy territory, Jan offers a heartful speech about how the zombie infection will kill civilians as well. At that moment de Cruz shows up with the truck, hiding the fact he's been bitten. Everyone accepts to follow Jan and they make it to the outpost in the morning. While the group hides, Jan approaches the entrance and almost gets shot by a guard. Soon Losano and the Major come out and reveal they already know everything that happened thanks to the Commissar's phone call, so Losano will allow Jan to come in because he's his nephew but not the rest of the group. He also explains that the higher-ups will bomb the area soon, but Jar refuses to leave anyone behind and goes back to his team. Losano wants to delay the bombing for the sake of his nephew, but the Major shoots him to stop him. Meanwhile the group doesn't want to die without causing some ruckus first, so de Cruz reveals he was bitten by a zombie hidden in the truck and volunteers to take an explosive to the gates. Before he leaves, Fuse confesses he does remember the day he signed an autograph for him. De Cruz approaches the gates with a grenade in hand, only to get shot by the guards. However he immediately turns into a zombie and lets the guards keep on shooting him until he reaches the gate. Rafir tries to provide some backup with his sharpshooting, but de Cruz gets shot in the head anyway. As he falls, so does the grenade, and the front gate is blown up. The group rushes inside and crosses a tunnel, where they quickly shoot a few guards before moving on. Soon they find the train, where everyone is getting ready to leave the outpost before the bombing starts. Jan wants to find the antidote, but Fuse and Jural aren't interested in saving the world and mingle with the crowd, hoping to escape. At that moment the zombies come out of the tunnel too and the Nazis get busy trying to fight them, so the rest of the group starts making their way further inside. A zombie manages to find them and tries to attack, but he's shot down by Rafir, who has climbed on top of the train. The room has become a vicious bloodbath, 
so Rafir decides to stay on the train to provide cover while Jan, Sergeant, and Priest Killer run ahead. They also keep encountering zombies so they shoot whoever gets in their way. Nearby Jural is also shooting zombies down and soon runs out of bullets, so he thinks of fighting with his fists. Rafir uses a few bullets to save him too, only to suddenly get dragged down by another zombie. Terrified, Jural runs to hide inside a truck at the same time that Fuse does the same. As they proceed to bond over missing their wives, they look in the mirror and notice that the back of the truck is filled with explosives. Fuse has some dynamite left, so Jural lits it up with his cigarette and the guys go down with a huge explosion, bringing a bunch of zombies with them. Back to the trio, they finally find the train car with the symbol, so Sergeant decides to find the engine to drive the train out while Jan and Priest Killer look for the antidote. Inside the train they find the Major, who just gave himself an injection. Jan thinks he wasted the antidote, but the Major explains there isn't one. He proudly admits he created the powder and gets excited when his body starts transforming, but Priest Killer immediately shoots him in the head. At that moment the zombies start pounding the door and Jan steps back, only to find a chained zombie behind a curtain that bites his hand. Wasting no time, Priest Killer shoots the zombie and then amputates Jan's hand to prevent him from transforming. As soon as it falls, the hand mutates. Then the zombies manage to open the door and get inside, so Jan and Priest Killer take shelter inside a small compartment. At the engine, Sergeant manages to get the train going, but he's soon surrounded by zombies. After shooting a few, he uses the last bullet to self-delete and avoid becoming a zombie too. As the train leaves the tunnel, a bunch of planes finally bomb the area, killing all the zombies while Jan and Priest Killer kiss. Moments later, Rafir wakes up and is surprised to see the train has safely escaped the area. Jan and Priest Killer are also fine thanks to the protection of the compartment. Eventually they get off the train and Jan offers Priest Killer to come with him, but she turns him down and chooses to go to France instead. As she leaves, she refuses to tell Jan her name. Back on the train, a dead soldier's hand moves. 